front of Okotoke Rock, Blackfoot word for big rock. And the conventional explanation here is that this was transported by glaciers, which it was in an indirect sense. But I maintain that glaciers in transporting this rock several hundred miles from its source would have essentially uh, left very distinctive marks if they even preserved the rock intact to this distance from, it, from its origin, see? I think it's far more likely that this rock was transported aboard an iceberg, was a what we would call an iceberg rafted erratic, of which we have looked at dozens and dozens, too, way too many to count, down in Washington State, Montana, and so forth, that is accepted by conventional geology as having been iceberg rafted. But one, one thing that indicates that this was iceberg rafted is the sharp edges on the rock that would have been ground off if they had been um, uh, transported simply by glaciers, because glaciers move slow. And in the time that it took to transport this rock from its origin, it would have been deeply buried in the ice and likely pulverized, scratched, striated, ground up. And we, what you would not have had is all of these sharp, angular, uh, pristine corners that you see here. Plus the rock, which we now see was broken into three places. It, it was fractured clearly at the time that it was deposited on the ice. At the same time, the, the separate pieces had to be transported intact, which again, they wouldn't do being transported in a glacier itself. Much more likely that what you had was a major flood through here carrying icebergs, and out of many of these icebergs was this metaquartzite rock that came from the Mount Robeson, Mount Edith Cavell area uh, up near Jasper Park. And another thing that, that clearly to me makes the case for massive floods through here is that south of here, just this side of the uh, Mon border with Montana, there's a field of gigantic current ripples that is uh, clearly uh, an indication of major meltwater floods passing through here. Over to the east, we would have had the, the, the glacier front of the Great Laurentide Ice Sheet, and to the west, we would have had the Cordilleran Ice Sheet. At some point, those two ice sheets coalesced pretty much right where we're standing. And then as the glacier age began to, to ameliorate around 15,000 years ago, the ice sheets receded back and opened up this corridor through here. Well, it was this corridor that then served as a conduit for huge volumes of meltwater that would have come through maybe 12 to 13,000 years ago. And I would argue that that's when this uh, uh, erratic here was actually deposited, not the 30,000 years that they say on the, the sign, but 13,000. So what you have to have is, is a, a, a confluence of separate events. One, you have to have the landsliding onto the ice sheet, but then at the same time, you have to have fracturing and melting of that ice sheet to create the huge armadas of icebergs that transported the erratic strain, of which this is the biggest, and to create the huge volumes of meltwater that could float those icebergs. You have to really do some mental visualization because you have to picture, you know, most of these people will come out here and they'll see the big rock, but they won't picture in their minds that you've got this turbid inland sea choked with boulders and mud and, and just uh, and, and thousands of icebergs hundreds of feet deep over our heads. It's <clears throat> just sweeping over this land and two great ice sheets, one to the east and one to the west. You know that this was hundreds of feet deep because for one thing, the iceberg to transport this thing was many times the size of this rock. And you know that icebergs are typically, you know, 85% of the iceberg is below the water, right? So the water to transport the iceberg of which this was cargo had to be hundreds of feet deep. And that's also confirmed by the Milk River current ripples south of here near the Montana border. By the time glaciers would have transported this from the origin it here, would it would have moved and rolled. There would have been scrapes and marks. And oh yeah, it would have had all these edges, like you said. Yeah, it would have been buried under never hundreds been, of feet of ice. It would have never. Been, it would have been separated long ago. And this yeah. is this was um, one piece before then. Yeah, it was all one piece. And so it did, it did and probably when it when it got let down, and it yeah, broke. It stressed it, but probably it's, in the ice. You got a picture. You know what a nunatak or nunatak is? It's where you've got like if you look over there in the mountains. And you picture that they're just buried in glacier ice, but all you've got is a few isolated peaks yeah. coming about. Those are the nunataks. So what you got to picture is that something caused like a major collapse out onto the ice sheet. That's then followed by fracturing of the ice sheet, melting, and then the transporting of these yeah. thousands of, of icebergs. Yeah. You're going to have this huge iceberg sitting in this big 
rolling field of basically mud, what a geologist would call alluvium, which is going to be soft, right? Because it's, it's sediment that's set, settled out of the floodwaters. Then the iceberg melts away. See, and this thing is essentially the final stage of the deposition of this thing is actually going to be a fairly gentle process. What started it is going to be inconceivably catastrophic, but the final stage of it is actually going to be a, a rather gentle process of that iceberg melting and setting this boulder down into the soft alluvium. And you can see how it's sunk into the ground. And at that time, the fractures would have opened up and that's when the rocks would have split and become, in effect, separate boulders. So there's other boulders, a little boulder over there. Are there some all around here? I mean, yeah, there's hundreds of them. Yeah, over a span of about 500 miles from the mouth of the Athabasca, where the yeah. Athabasca comes out of the mountains, all the way into Montana. Yeah, and right there near the border with Montana is a field of gigantic current ripples that really confirms the, the passage of huge volumes of water over yeah, this right. landscape. It's like the ghost event that hovers over this landscape that you don't see unless you've, you know, trained yourself to see it. <laughs>